Elk Enigma sounds fun for EG. Yeah. Oh, maybe a little bit too farm heavy, but. Yeah. Good, good sounder ban. That made um, Crit's life a little, or not Crit, uh, S4's life a little hard when he played against it. They still could do Warlock, but ultimately the, the Enigma still had a fairly straightforward time. Yep. Global Silence no longer a problem. I would, Did that uh, invoke and then so. Right. Where do EG go? They do have the option of the uh, of the Alchemist. If they want it. Um, I don't. I think a third. I don't think they'll take it. Third or fourth. Pick I mean, they that. haven't picked it since day one, have they? And they had some issues with it day one. I pick feel it. like they pick it. Mm. I'm not really sure what the what newbies next two picks are going to be, but with what they have right now, I think Elf is good. I like a 3-4 pickup <laughs> of Weaver um, for EG right now. That could work too. I like that. There's not an overwhelming amount of disables because the lack of initiation from Abaddon. It's a very strong laning hero against Abaddon. Obviously, it's probably safer for a fourth pick because you want to see Ooh. if they are going to So they that. leave it out and they take it themselves. Okay. That's... I don't know if EG was expecting that one. Mm. I think they're still okay with it because they do have Enigma, very and value late game, super farmy hero. And the MK. Yeah, they've got super good team fight right now and great lockdown. You could see a Warlock out of EG. It'd be pretty good. I do like the Weaver idea. It would help them lane against the Baton really well, but maybe against Elk CM it's too dangerous. Oh, they do pick it. All right, so this makes the aggressive nature of EG way more threatening because now Monkey King can be anywhere. Yeah. We'll count that for like five heroes or something like that. And then they can bring <laughs> somebody else with an IO as well. So, so a seven hero gank out of nowhere globally. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? That's, yeah. Yeah. And lane pressure advantage against Alk. I mean, so that, that's looking good. What we need now are two self-sustaining cores out of EG because the IO Monkey King are going to be running around the map a lot. There's not going to be a lot of... Well, do you think? Support. Do you think? Uh, aren't they just going to get a, a a pressure lane against Alchemist, like uh, Io Ursa, or something like that? Yeah, they could do that. Um, and, but you do need a, at least one really self-sufficient core. I think you need. I think, I, I think you still need need two self-sufficient cores. Okay. What about like Troll Warlord or something for the safe lane? Or I think Weaver's still pretty good. Yeah, let's see, wait on this fourth pickup. Um, newbie, what do you get okay. here? So Counter to Nigma. Maybe. Yeah, Venge. Makes okay. sense, and Eagle yeah. Genesis. That's really good. Completely that, throw out that the That is self sufficient. It's an morph. alchemist hero. It, it's, it's not ex. I mean, considering the lane he's going up yeah. against, he's going to be going facing an Abaddon. Yeah. He's not t particularly scared about that. Well, they could. They could aggro with the Abaddon. Yeah. So that might be something that EG has to worry about. Or they could aggro with Venge CM plus one. Um, they can even dual lane. I think they. I think Newbie picks Legion Commander maybe for their last like really strong lane. Can definitely pressure well. And then they could just do that tri lane maybe against Morphling. Maybe that's not the pick, but if they just dual Enigma, I feel like they can win fights easy. Yeah, I can't think of too many other. Uh, well, they have to take out a hero. Right controlling now. cores versus Morphling. You have to pressure this Morphling. Like it's all of a sudden with a Morphling versus an Alchemist, it's like it flips. Right. The Alchemist now the Alchemist lineup deals pressure to actually make things happen. Because inevitably, what happens is the Alchemist starts turning against you. Newbie yeah. just maybe goes Earth Spirit as well if they want to do Venge Core. They could, but then. I don't know, their lineup doesn't look too good with a Venge core and an Alchemist against Morphling plus whatever core EG eventually picks up. That's true. So you think it's Venge support for sure? Or they could pick a really greedy four. Chinese teams have been favoring Doom. I don't think I've seen Newbie pick it up too too much, but... Which team played it against each? Uh, Wings, I guess? Uh, yes, they're uh, yes. In their yeah. best of one match. Okay. They ban the Warlock themselves. Okay. 
So is it mid jug or is this uh, Sumail Morphling? I think it's mid jug. Mid jug. Yes. They could do Morphling though, but jug probably makes yeah. more sense because they have more kill potential, I guess. Morphling is actually pretty good at pressuring when he has the extra mana. Uh, normally it's like CM, but in this yeah. case it's Wiss. You just constantly waveforming into this alchemist. I have a feeling it's probably mid jug. I, I honestly don't remember the last time I saw Sumail play Morphling. Wow, well, we get a fifth pick Rubik. It's a really good Rubik game. You yeah. can steal uh, Morph. Steals. Black hole. Black yeah. hole, obviously. That one's a big one. Okay. So, Corvenge and. Uh, Fun final draft between our uh, two lower bracket teams. Uh, Purge, prediction time. Which way do you want to go on this I, one? I think the, the newbie draft looks really solid, but I, I think I'm going to go with EG. I, I feel like they're, they're going to be able to eke it out, but I'm less confident than last game. Okay. Um, I think in, in some ways, newbie is very all in on this alchemist. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to pick my boys in blue. What a show. Um, EG looked a little off in game two. I I actually think Newbie can pull this off with their with their aggression. Laning phase should go well for them. Normally I'd say EG, but I think I'm actually gonna go Newbie here. Okay. Interesting. Okay. We have two for EG and one for Newbie. Into our final game we go in the lower bracket round three. This for a chance to play IG Vitality. It's all a best of one now as we head back to our commentary team of Gods and Odie Pixel. Thank you very much, Red. Game three indeed. Here we have it now, EG versus Newbie. We've seen the draft. There's no Naga Siren, don't worry. There is an Alchemist. It's coming out here for the side of Newbie. I mean, okay. I, a little more tolerant, I feel, towards the Al, because it has a fewer maybe than, than the Naga. We've seen more of the Naga. We've seen more of the Naga. <laughs> yeah, so with more of the Naga coming out, I feel like the the Alex it's may a be a bit more welcome. Yeah, yeah, you know the but crowd the crowd don't mind because Newbie did it too. So. For sure, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll crowd accept it for now. But, yeah. uh, and the people back at home, they'll they'll be excited for what uh, EG's managed to get their hands on. Of course, once again that Monkey King bringing Enigma out and uh, a very interesting kind of duo core that we don't I, necessarily always see from EG having this more thing and Juggernaut. Yeah, so I think the the duo support's kind of interesting too mm. with EG. It's perhaps our first IO we've seen all tournament. It was banned a lot against Team Liquid. But what we're seeing now is Io with Monkey King. I imagine Newbie didn't expect them to pick Io with Monkey since they're both typically four position heroes, but we're gonna see like Crit playing it in that five roll, something he played, he can play very well, he's played before, uh, and that's not gonna be a big issue. Oh, this smoke talking about Crit, bit of the caster's curse kicking in as he's surrounded and taken down. Newbie, first blood, even more of a bonus U9 to pick that up on that core carry Venge. Nice little start for him. They may actually aggro trilate. CM Rubik Venge, three heroes, all with nukes, set up, disable. There's slows, there's stuns, there's everything you could hope for in an aggro trilane. This is like the best aggro trilane like you almost ever see. Maybe just lacking a bit of survivability and tankiness, but Venge even is like a pretty stat heavy hero. So yeah, aggro trilane all the way. They'll give KP the 1v1. Not expecting him to beat an Enigma, but at least to hold his own, get good farm against the Enigma. So very, very bold laning setup from Newbie. Much better aggro trial lane than what we saw in game number one. Absolutely. And it, it certainly seems to be a strat that teams are doing when there's a Monkey King on the map. They really want to force and them up to the top. Universe didn't expect this. Iron Talon Clarity, you do not get these items for a 1v1. He was anticipating like a, at least a dual lane down bottom, like a Rubik bench, maybe with a CM jungle and to get zoned back into his jungle itself. But these items do not help him out at all. 1v1 against the Abaddon. Monkey King is headed down bottom, so I imagine that's going to be the solution. Like, all right, Uni's not really geared up for 1v1. KP's a bit vulnerable. We saw this uh, earlier on, uh, back, I think it was in game one. Let's actually harass him early on, get like maybe a level one Jingyu and just trade hits some. It'll be interesting. See on the top lane is Crit. It's caught out here. Telekinesis into Magic Missile. We'll tether across. Yeah, we're seeing a fair bit of punch there from Newbie. Uh, really will punish you if you get caught out. We'll be playing that mid-jug, looking just to harass Alk wherever possible. Try and chip away at him with that early blade dance. Well, Interesting to see how he does. Not necessarily the hero you directly associate with Samael, but perhaps seeing a, what U9 was able to achieve in game two with it and said, guys, let me have a shot. Yeah. And a hero that is a decent, fast-paced fighting hero. You, 
there's a lot of greed going around. You pick the uh, the offlane is particularly very greedy heroes in Abaddon and Enigma. Often heroes that go Midas. We've seen the Radiance Abaddon. Enigma just wants to farm typically. Uh, and then there was an Alk and a Morphling pick kind of to counter each other, like both to be greedy carry picks. So when you've got already two greedy cores, you needed a fighting core. And that's where Venge was picked up by Newbie and the Juggernaut was picked up for Sumail. Like, you can scale well. Juggernaut's a great late game here. We saw it last game, but it's at least a hero that if can create space early on because if Enigma and Morph aren't able to fight and you lose your lanes, you need one of your cores to step up, say, no problem, I'm going to smoke it with my supports, I'll use my Omni Slash, I'll get some kills for us. And of course, with it, with these lanes and, and with that aggressive try, and it really feels like Newbie, they do need to, to make something happen oh, there because efficiency-wise, yeah, giving Zai that lane oh, that's interesting into the jungle. Oh, I, I like this. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, Zai should do fine, uh, yeah. especially in the early levels against uh, an Abaddon. Yeah, Baden is going to struggle to contest this lane a bit. Goes for an early point in the miss calls, using this to last hit. Normally you think, oh, if you're against a melee one one Abaddon, you get a point in passive, you just, you trade right clicks with that enemy melee hero, but it's a Monkey King. No one wants to trade hits with a Monkey King. Jingu in this 1v1 is going to give him a big edge over the Abaddon. This is this is where you, the Iron Talent works. You go soup. this is like the greedy option for ET, where they can do well in all three lanes. Well, not really do well on top. They'll do okay enough, perhaps, get some CS from Morphling. But they'll do well in mid, do well at bottom while jungling. That's the grab onto crit again, and actually unable to get the tether out with the change stun from the magic missile. Nice lane ward there. He pings it out, perhaps getting telekinesis in from a position where he thought he was in fog, so he may realize that ward is there, come back and deward it. And yeah, there we go. He's got a sentry, and will be a, a quick deward. Nice, she looked to beat the ward here. Oh no, JK. I wonder if he's going to give that to Artizi, but. <laughs> Look like, actually ended up looked it. like he was going to, and then the creeps <laughs> started taking, so he's like, oh, make sure someone gets it. And, um, oh, bottom lane, Zai actually uh, getting a fair few hits on Test Triple C, forcing him away from uh, ah, the, the camps that he was heading to in the yeah. bounty. Bounty and probably also stacking. Like mm. You're happy missing some CS and farm in the mid lane if you get like a, a double stack or something. Yeah, Jug taking quite a lead now, Samuel. Three and a half minutes in, 22 to the 12 CS of the Alchemist and Zai. It does mean the bottom lane's empty, though. So we're talking about Monkey King being pretty good 1v1 against the Baden. Leaving the lane is basically him saying, I'd rather stop out free farming and getting bounty runes. We'll go in the mid, good slow on to Triple C, Samel trying to get in range for a potential Blade Fury, but KP there with the reaction and will force them back. <laughs> the 0v0 lane at bottom. <laughs> Abaddon, I like their Abaddon TPs because his lane, I mean, his lane's empty, could be free farming, but you want to keep the pressure up on top. Morphling is being... Uh, shut down quite nicely, so keeping this trial up here, continuing to find kills, continuing to, to bully this morph, and yeah, they find kills, they've perhaps got one here. Uh, top lane, crit, really suffering. I mean, as we saw, got the D ward, but the wave of terror vision is always going to be there to allow the grab to happen. Zai, looking for kills in return, will jump in and find Kaka, and in fact gets the jump out just before the frostbite kicks in, so it won't be held in position. I was just about to say, this trial is looking really good, because they hadn't even used their shrine, I believe, up top. They still have, yeah, they still, still have access there? to a shrine. They've aggro trilight, not had to use a shrine. They may do so now with the CM fairly low, although it's just a CM still, so she may just be happy to just jungle a camp or two, head back to base and TP back in. But. Uh, and RTZ moving down to that bottom lane, looking for the easier farm potential mid lane. Samel going in on test triple C, hasn't got quite enough damage and may have overstayed the mark. Now, Telekinese back does not have that blade fury to get out defensively because of the aggressive play. The healing ward, though, will it be enough? Looking to juke out through the trees. Is there any backup? Zai is making his way over, as well as crit. Samel should be fine. Is the tether going to be enough? They get him up. Still, they try and chase the boundless strike from Zai. Holds back Karakart and U9. And between Zai and crit, they will get Samel back to safety. Easy Ancient's farm now, but... Oh. Good rotations from the, the newbie supports, but yeah, the IO kind of saves the day there, as well as a very quick, responsive healing ward. Just level one, but it was enough to help Sumail out on his retreat. Did free up some space in the side lanes, but Morphling has rotated bottom, deciding he's going to fare better in the off lane against the Abaddon. I say he thinks he's going to fare better. He's only managed to get a couple of CS since going there. He got like six CS top, and he's only on nine CS at the moment, so it's not necessarily going to be an easy matchup. Abaddon very annoying and can, can do some good zoning himself. But the end result of these lane movements has been Monkey King constantly pressuring the Alk jungle. Jug's been playing very fast tempo and trying to really take the game to SCC as well. On mid lane, Zai straight up with the setup with the boundless strike. So Mal and Crip moving in for U9, and they'll take it. This time, Samal getting the kill with the help of his supports. 
Sumail's aggression has been really good this game. Even when he's not finding the kills, he's just slowing down the farm of the Alk. That time he does get the kill, and he's going to hit level 6 now. So Omni Slash, very dangerous for heroes like the Alchemist to just be farming in the jungle if Juggernaut comes to invade. Is that right? That's Triple C, and we'll be able to get the Jingu built up. That's Triple C could be in trouble here with the balance strike, bringing him down low. KP comes in with the aphotic shield, and it will be enough to save him. Faith, though, just right clicking past them. He's moving across, and Zaya could just turn and take a CM for free there. A bit, bit of a strange movement there from Faith as uh, ah, he walks into the midst of it. Yeah, I thought he was probably heading down there to help his buddy out, but up just giving away a kill himself. Sumel talked about aggression. This is not him joining up with that, the aggression in the jungle, but just pressuring the tower. He's managed to just maximize his early game effectiveness from just getting kills, pulling out the yeah. Alchemist, taking a tower. Zai up to top lane. Uh, did get stunned oh, up immediately. Yeah. In fact, yeah, newbie find the kill. Good black hole from Universe onto two. Is he actually going to have enough damage to get a kill, though? It isn't. U9 is able to walk out. Kakra as well will survive. So as flashy as it was, there was just no reaction from EG. No way that they could actually find that resulting in a kill. Oh, and somehow has got an Omni Sash here. If he gets that triple C on his own, he should be able to get the kill. And indeed, with the Blade Fury, he will. I don't even need it. Trust the crit, gets the crit. Samael. So. Nicely played, gets the Alk. Alk has been constantly hounded wherever he goes to farm, be it the Monkey King, the Jug. He is getting constantly contested. He's drawing circles in the two jungles. Normally you see the Elk like zoned out of the main jungle and then he falls back to farm around that secret shop. But we're seeing him get chased even there. They are really not happy about this jug, uh, this Elk pick and making sure they do everything they can to prevent it from free farming. Looking at the laning stage though, definitely another story where both some male and Universe are finding the farm. RTZ still struggling a little too. So we, we saw him kind of pressured yep. on the top, moving down to the bottom. He's now starting to get some CS. Uh, but with KP back in the lane, it could get a little bit harder. And RTZ, they need to find the space for this Morphling. As it, it, it is a bit of a slow start here for the Waterboy. It really is the, uh, the story of EG and their games. RTZ struggling, not so much in terms of individual performance, but just in terms of the way the lanes are set up and the way opponents are playing. It's like, okay, we're versing RTZ, let's shut him down. He's picking these greedy carries. We've seen Spectres, we've, we've seen... Yeah, the Morphling, we're seeing these, the Drow Rangers. The Drow's not so much greedy, but it can be pressured a lot. And these heroes are constantly being aggroed against. When he's not playing Lifestealer, the game is very different for him. Samel, walking forward. See you now, try and go for a stun. There's the swap. In fact, to set up the Blade Fury's there before nice. the Magic Missile, though. Yeah. And Samel will be fine with the Invisory. Yeah, didn't have Omni Slash, so it was a bit of a dangerous push to go for, but make sure he doesn't get stunned up there. That's some really nice uh, boundless strikes from Zai as well, consistently being used to, to just break up any sort of play that Newbie attempt for from the sidelines. KP doing what he can to try and bully RTZ down bottom level eight, so an easy hero to deal with as a Morphling. He's very agi heavy, but thinking that with these rotations, perhaps he can proc the ultimate and then have his teammates come in to finish off the kill. And, they have mm -hmm. got numbers down here. Samael here with the help of Zai. We'll look to find Kaka. Telekinesis will be there to hold back the Monkey King, the Aphotic Shield. Keeping Kaka high for the moment. U9 will come in with the TP. Magic Missile and Crossbow and Samael bringing him down low. And in fact, he's in a lot of trouble. One more touch and the U9 gets the kill. They'll bring down the Jug as well as the Monkey oh. King. Now turning towards Artizi. Can crit. Keep them all from alive. A lot of mana to work with. Zai by his back. Knows that he cannot let RTZ go down here. RTZ crit now looking to start to turn. Wait for four for Faith. They have the boundless strike. And with that buyback, they will be able to get the CM. And they will keep RTZ alive. Not totally worth the buyback. He's a hero that doesn't mind using up his money early on like a, for a Monkey King to buy back there. But really big kill on the Jug there. Couldn't get the Omni Slash off and didn't get the Healing Ward down. If he stopped to cast Healing Ward, it would have given that extra right click. He tried to just outrun the Vengeful Spirit, but... Every little bit of damage adding up there. The Venge with, I think, had like a casual Blightstone and everything just for the extra right click damage. Yeah, Blightstone with Phase Boot. So Jug thinking, like, I've got Phase, I'm going to outrun this. But there was a lot of right click damage, and that's a level four wave of Terra Venge build. This physical damage cannot be underestimated. Oh, Samael getting swapped back here. We're seeing the Blade Fury will help him a little bit, but the right click still fly through. Zion Crit are there to help him turn it around. Yeah. The Magibus on the Frostbite, they're bringing Samael very low. Yeah, now with the Healing Ward out, too. he's fine. Crit saves the day there. If he's not there for that tether, they're not saving Sumail. You want to get this tower. Yep. Uh, try for a deny potency, and they will get it. Sumail with the chase down onto U9, though. And they're very, very low <laughs> on UB. They're grouping up for that Omni Slash, making sure he doesn't isolate one hero with it. 
Somehow we'll be able to, to get himself out of there. Meanwhile, during all this kind of fighting and such, yes, Triple C found his space in that upper half of the, the Radiance map to, to get the armor complete. Still yeah. worth noticing as well, Universe having the free farm time of his life on this top lane. On yep. par with the Alchemist and a lot of money rolling into the Bank of Enigma. Going to be going for the, the fast blink dagger, so we'll see some rotations with that. Not necessarily looking for like big team fights off of the, the black hole, but just killing core heroes, finding a kill now, finding a kill on Avenge. Take what picks you can. Mid lane though, Samael grabbed out, and this time Crit and Zai not in the neighborhood to help him. The way Kaka has played with the Venge this game, him and U9. You know, with the bench. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the Rubik yeah, yeah. set, like the, the two players, like have just been in perfect synergy, finding kills. At top lane first on the IO, the plays at mid, they're just in perfect synergy with. The, they're never stacking their stuns. The telekinesis magic missile. Ooh. They're using the swap. They're like buying time for the blade period. That's end. a nice deal as well at this yeah. stage of the game. With the way that he's playing, as you mentioned. And just using that Rubik insta-disable, because magic, magic Missile can be dodged, but like you chase down a, a jug, you're not worried about Omni Slash because you've got an insta-disable. How many more? Kaka? How's actually going to look to just farm the Eidlons and buy some of fair bit of gold. Yep. Yeah. U9 managed to phase his way in a bit faster, you perhaps get that kill, but ultimately you, you force Enigma away, you take some farm, and you apply pressure up top. Alk has not had the best time, he's done Decent enough. Considering the circumstances, Alka is still like on an okay trajectory right now, but EG are going to have to continue to keep that Alka on their mind. But it feels like the Venge is doing well. The Abaddon in bottom lane has had uncontested free farm. Morphling, while going bottom, has managed to farm better. He's still not farming amazingly well. So the more picked up as a greedy counter, the Alchemist isn't necessarily going to pay off if he's not free farming. Yeah, the moment is really kind of the greed of the Enigma versus the greed of the Alk. As we see at the moment, those two. At the top, that Midas doing work for Universe. KP, good map awareness, seems to know what's coming his way, and TP's out before Monkey scouts him. That bounce was very close, yeah. I think he saw him right at the end of the TP with that last jump. Yeah. Now, EG, looks like they will be able to claim this tower. Can't see if he can get that last touch, get himself a bit more gold on the way. Uh, put the fortification, but no, no, no intentions to head down in Ubi. Moments like that, that's like the kind of TPs you expect from carry players, like right as the gank's coming at the last possible second, he TPs out. So fantastic map awareness and newbie applying the pressure at top lane. Need to be careful, there could be a response coming from EG. Io is already gearing up here. We still don't see that level six Io, so they haven't got the relocate gank threat yet. Bottom lane, are they actually going for a kill? No, looking for the, the spell still on the waveform. Top lane, U9 being played around with a little bit by Zai. Zai just keeping eyes, but none of the rest of EG looking for the chase down, so Zai won't won't commit. Just keeping tabs on the movement here of Newbie's course. Bench fairly tanky. Ogre, Ogre Club, Wand, Quilla, all these small little items adding up, and feels like EG's timing really will come off of this. Blink, Dagger, Enigma. They can go for a big smoke, try and make a play off of that. Sumail's going to have a, at least a Yasha. Perhaps the level 2 ultimate from Jug is what you're looking for. You almost... You almost double the hero's effectiveness with that Omni Slash when you hit that timing, so we'll see what, what Jug can do as far as uh, smoking up with the team, trying to make some plays. SCC. A bit of the kill that they want. Here's Isolated, Omni Slash, bring them down to half, and there's the Black Hole from Universe, grabbing both of them with a double. Kaka, though, with a stolen Black Hole, holds some man in position. Unite comes across, and that stolen Black Hole allows them to find some mail. They'll turn towards side and bring him as well, but RTZ will find the cleanup. And at the end of the day, despite Kaka's best efforts, EG will still come out on top with a brilliant initiation from Universe. Great. Black Hole and the Wukong's command being laid down in the perfect place. Even though Newbie had a response, they were responding into a Black Hole. That Rubik was like, I'm going to walk in a Black Hole. Oh crap, this is a Wukong's command pelting away on me. This hurts and they get the Jug Monkey King, but that was not the fight they were hoping for. Losing the Alk when he was at about 3.5k gold, couldn't buy the Relic. He'll get right back to farming on respawn though, so he's already back up to that gold point. And we'll still have an okay Radiance timing, but every little bit adds up and helps. We'll see what Newbie's response is going to be. Black Hole just used. Do they try and take a fight? Omni Slash just used as well. This is realistically a window where Newbie can actually get aggressive, take some smoke plays, try and use this little timing. They've got a smoke on Faith. They can try and make that happen. Four man smoke while SCC continues to farm. Well, look at that replay. I mean, again, great movement from the three members of EG, Samael, Zai, and Universe. 
It is indeed a cute little play from Kaka, which, as we said, does allow them to, to end up finding Samao, but the heavy commitment, it just cost them. The yeah. universe is just too big. The healing ward doing a lot of work for them, and Artor turning up to, to get himself a little bit of the glory as well. U9 went for the jug first, which perhaps they don't kill the jug if he doesn't, but the Monkey King seemed like the, the more important kill there. If he stops that Wukong's command faster, perhaps Rubik stays alive as well. I think not killing the Monkey King there was perhaps a mistake. You've got to address that Wukong. You either need to get out of the Wukong, cancel it with a swap, or kill the Monkey King instantly. Fighting inside it is just not an option. Interesting as well to see KP switching up his build here in this uh, third yep. game in comparison to what we saw earlier. Uh, going for the Vlad, so as you said, kind of yourself, you know, Newbie maybe looking more to, to get stuff done now, especially with this Venge Core, and, yeah, and KP's build showing up. They've got the kind of faster paced draft, and Alchemist, while he is a greedy pick, he's a greedy pick that does nothing for like 15, 20 minutes, but then he peaks very early on in the game. This is not a hero that gets strong around 40, 50 minutes like maybe a Morphling does. He wants to fight around that 25 to 30 minute mark. That's when he has like Octarine, Manta, Shiva's Guard. That's where he gets really scary. So we're going to see them try and utilize that timing more. And while a Midas, he's not going to go Radiant, so you don't need that Midas to make that big jump. Just getting fighting, fighting items is going to be just just good enough for him. Like, get a casual Vlad, get a Solar Crest for your team, perhaps, if you want. Get these good defensive items and play around SCC. In the lane, and they will toy with Arteezy, but very hard to do anything about him whilst he has crit <laughs> He's trying to just steal him. the waveform, and he's not getting it. He tried to, like, bait out a waveform and then steal it, but Arteezy knew what he was up to. Re-morph <laughs> after the wave. Yeah, he's got that full strength, though, of course, Kaka. The Dire Ward in the jungle did not see this smoke. They were just out of range. See what they can get. Samel would be a nice grab, but it is right round at Shrine. And Black Hole's back up. They've got to be careful here, Newbie, about the, the angle that they take. I think they realize as well, seeing the, the Enigma and the Monkey King joining forces with Samel, they know there's no way that they can just initiate up to that high ground, even with the vision there. Yep. Monkey will start jumping around and make sure that no one's still in the area. But as you said, Newbie have to back off. Not a good place to have your smoke pop when you're in the low ground and your opponent's uh, positioned on the high ground, even if you have vision. And most importantly, your five man going up a very narrow ramp into a black hole. Kaka, seeing if he can get the grab this time. Nope. Get the steal, and no. He's still stuck with the morph. Keep, keep trying. I mean, it's 25 mana, may as well. But Arteezy definitely knows what he's up to. That's Triple C, very close to having the boots to travel. Avengers build, looking for the Manta style, and there's your medallion, as you mentioned, for KP, building towards the Solar Crest. Like this item, helps a lot against Omni Slash and tanking up against Monkey King. There's another item, you can, it's going to be all about keeping the Alk alive. There's a lot of damage you can throw at him, and it is a, not an easy Alchemist game, even if you manage to farm well, so we'll see what he can do. Crit's Io has been very quiet this game. Doesn't really feel like a hero that has paid off for EG. They had a weaking lane, weaker lanes because of it. It felt like it's like, oh, Io's in the pool, we gotta pick Io, it's such a good hero, and it is, but the uh, the safe lane would have maybe been better suited with a uh, different support, perhaps something with a bit more fighting power with a, like that could pair up with the Monkey King. But long term, the Io will pay off if they can. I mean, they have managed to do well enough here in the the early game that Io is going to really amplify what Morphling can do in a fight. Can save a Juggernaut, the relocate save, the overcharge in team fights onto carries can be a very very big deal. So if they can do anything about this mid lane push, can be bringing the tier one down low. Universe in the neighborhood. Acid spray, making it very hard for him to get any sort of blink initiation. They want to fight before. Oh. And with this ward still here, they managed to catch outside. They'll be able to take them on kicking out to start things off. Oh, missed the relocate save. I mean, it was just the cast time. He, he went for it instantly, but on kicking also died instantly. Big thing is here, they're trying to fight and push before Enigma gets, like, Lincolns and BKBs. If Enigma manages to use that greed factor with the Midas to get up to, yeah, Lincoln Sphere first, then you go BKB. How do you stop those black holes? And they do not want to fight into an impossible to cancel or steal black hole. Very for Roshan. Samel, though, jumping in onto Kaka, bringing him low. In fact, keeps himself alive there with the solar footage. He'll finally go. That universe jumps in, but he can't quite he get the stunned. block off initially. He gets stunned immediately. The universe Enigma is out and down, Arteezy. Falling low, but S Triple Z falling lower. They'll pop the ages. Get KP on the back lines, cleaning up crit as well, turning back towards the morphing as they find Arteezy. That Roshan, that Aegis. 
Paying off massively for Newbie. And Enigma Universe couldn't quite get that black hole off. Stunned immediately on initiation. Such a big fight. EG couldn't get there before Roche went down. So SCC had the Aegis as well, an extra tool to play around. So he doesn't mind trading his life to get Arteezy low. And KP with the early Vlad's pick up going for this fighting build. That fight there is where you say, yeah, you don't get a Midas this game. If you have a Midas there, maybe you have Midas Vlad's instead of like Vlad's, like Vlad's medallion. It makes such a big difference having all these cheap cost-effective fighting items. And it seems like Newbie have said, okay, EG's trying to fight our outcomes by going super greedy with this Enigma Morphling. They think we're going greedy in Abaddon. Let's not do it. Let's switch it up. Let's play for a more fighting, fast tempo game. The Venge core, the Abaddon playing for the fighting items, not the greedy items. This has really flipped the switch and changed the story as EG just can't really fight or keep up. Arteezy still just doesn't quite have that critical mass of items to be effective in a team fight yet. Needs that. It's always the two item timing. The Linkus plus the Eblade. That's when Morph reaches like his, his early game peak. That's when he wants to fight. And the plus, of course, because he didn't get that black hole off then, and Universe does still have it. So I look at the lay down, the Wukong's command here. Already pushing RTZ out. You'll be creating the space to claim this tier one. S Triple C not. What a great fight. We have, have, have to watch that one again. U9, they group up around the... The jug, it looks like a perfect bait. And then U9, I think he just something clicks in his head like... He gets the Solo Chris, he gets the Vlad Zora, he gets constant Aphotic oh Shields, and EG just don't have and the damage to fight into it. look what happened off the back of that as well. Oh you know, that boy. die back and certainly contributing. I mean, look at how close was Universe to Olympus, because something like that could have changed that situation. He was he, he, well, close I, I imagine being close, be close enough, before yeah. the buyback in the second yeah, day. Yeah, he, he probably had enough for the Perseverance, mm. but not the Lincoln's recipe itself. He, if he had that, and, that fight, it would have been a hell of a lot different. And that's where this game comes down so much to timings. EG went greedy. Their timing comes around the Lincoln Sphere with the Morphing Ethereal Blade. Newbie recognizing it. They're not even... Normally with Alk, you fight around like 30 minute mark when he has Octarine Manta. They're going without the Octarine. They're going much earlier with the Alchemist because they're afraid of EG getting that Lincoln Sphere, getting that Ethereal Blade. They want to fight as early as possible, even if SCC isn't at that normal Alk fighting stage. No, SCC standing tall on the high ground. They know they've got a little bit of timing left. Universe will be 20 seconds, 10 yep. seconds in fact until that black hole is there and indeed you know newbie they know the timing they know that it's time to again respect well, that that potential threat the, their timing's been extended now the enigma mm. buyback winning those fights taking your racks that window where there's no lincoln sphere just got extended so now you actually you're no longer in as much of a rush you can actually wait for that octarine core you can push another tier two tower you can perhaps even take another roshan so winning a fight and forcing enigma buyback changes the state of this game and the window for Newbie to excel has been increased, but go. EG looking to do something about that. And they need something insane. They need to get onto the vent. Someone like Jug needs to find look at his positioning, U9. Like, he how, knows. How does Jug get on top of that? And then KP's like, I'm just going to run in, scout out the smoke, steals healing ward. And EG no just then way running in. back to the base. Well, do I have a link? Is that so... 
Was it uni university finishes? On the link? That's not his. That's a uh, so, sorry. Morph Links. Oh yeah, I guess he can put it on the Enigma. That's yeah, a good he, way to approach your fight. If he yeah, puts yeah. that on universe, definitely. That already helps some of your problems. Yes, there is two ways through. You can use spell steel and the swap. So theoretically, you want to use True. spell steel first to break it and then swap. Yeah, you don't get to steal the black hole, but you cancel the. You've got to cancel that Lincolns to make sure you can deal with it. And generally, it's the alchemy abaddon in the front lines getting caught. Uh, we're seeing those heroes get black hole the most. Rubik wants to stay out on the sides. Although I say that we've seen some super aggressive. Generally, it's the alchemy abaddon in the front lines getting caught. Uh, we're seeing those heroes get black hold the most rubik wants to stay out on the sides although i say that we've seen some super aggressive it, great rubik plays this game kaka has been absolutely stand out as is u9 and newbie gonna start working on shrines now a lot of early farm on this bench good fighting items and the problems for eg will continue as these shrines go down and newbie perhaps wait out for that next aegis and of course, S Triple C just incredibly massive. 27 minutes in, 22,000 net worth, nearly, well, just around double that of the value that Artesis have managed to, yep. to climb to. Octarine complete. And uh, as we see here, the two of them, CCC, just making sure that Artesis he gets the hell out of there. Still no ethereal blade. We'll have it before any kind of a second, second high ground push comes, but you're already looking at one lane of racks down and tier three tower low and newbie eyeing off Roche. They're camping it out, could respawn any time now, so Sam's just on, on Roche duty. While the rest of the cores farm on the lanes. See what, okay, I was about to say, I was wondering what KP was gonna get next on the Abaddon for fighting items. Gets a casual drums, just like a whatever kind of item. May even consider like an Aghanim Scepter this game as like a nice team fight item that you're trying to break well, I guess at this rate, he could probably rely on the Alka near this stage just to That's get him. That's true, yeah. Because he's probably priority in this match, wouldn't you say? Or do you uh, give the Rubik first? No, not, uh, not the Rubik. I'd say maybe you consider Venge, because oh, Venge yeah, is a core. Yeah. Um, not not the that you want to die, but the, stat, the stats as a core hero is just nice, and the swap cooldown. So Venge, Venge or Abaddon. Typically, even like when you've got a Rubik with an Axe, you just want to give it to core heroes because they benefit so much from all the extra stats in fights. But we'll see. I mean, he's, he's got enough farm. He may just say, look, that out is going to give me one too late. We want to end the game now. I can buy one, but... There's a lot of good items you can get as an Abaddon that wants to fight. You get items like Lotus Orbs uh, to try and deal with like the Shotgun, there's, get rid of the Malifers. There's, there's a lot of different things you can do this game. Smail still trying to climb his way towards that Diffusal Blade. A few hundred gold and he will have it. Universe as well. Still, still quite a bit away from that completed Lincoln. Has the money for Perseverance, but the recipe right. isn't quite that. CM in her little Roche cave finally gets rewarded These with guys, the Roche respawn. It paid off. He's back up, we found him. Poor CM, that's, that's your life. But we'll uh, find the Roche respawn. I imagine Alk picks this one up. We'll have to drop his armlet, presumably, or the Hypersone, I guess. He hasn't got the full AC yet. Can come EG, though. Can they get here in time? Oh, Can doesn't they look like Roche it. Roche was falling very quickly. And KP's in, yeah, in, in scouting perfect duty. perfect smoke you know? dispelling range. That newbie. Lying out the outsides of it all, and there we have the movement forward with the illusions. Universe trying to live for the wraparound, but the Roshan's already down. S Triple C picks up the age. SML will go in with the Omni Slash, but they've lost crit. They do bring down Faith. Magic Missile will prop the Lincolns on RTZ. Universe still has that black hole. Looking for a perfect opportunity. They're relatively grouped up. There's the jump. He's found two, and he'll go for it. But the concoction flies through, cancels the ult. Wukok Saman is dropped down by Zai, but they've lost Universe. Samel getting chased down. They'll lose the jug as well. RTZ desperately trying trying to find Kaka and he will do so with the waveform. He blame and the adaptive strike. He's managed to bring U9 down as well. Artur holding on, tries to go for the TP, but it's not quick enough. The damage is too much there from SCCC and KB. Now TZ showing some signs of oh. life at the end of the fight. And They're all in. They, they want to end, end this newbie. They, they want to move forward. They want to knock EG out. Send them home. Yeah, more important than the EG buyback stats is the black hole cooldown. That is something which they're like, there's no black hole. We're not afraid of anything. Oh, and crit. SCC, okay, won't get that kill, but we'll swing back towards the mid lane and with Aegis still in hand, EG, you're gonna buy back, but even when you're back alive, still no Black Hole, still no big ultimate, still no Omni Slash. Where's your damage gonna come from? As EG will be pressed to defend their last lane of Rax, no defense at mid. Can they defend top? The real test for EG. 
their final stand here potentially at DAC Universe will jump forward but as you mentioned still no black hole Telekinesis onto Artor looking to try to bring KP down though Universe kept alive by crit RTZ waveforms into the center of it all but he gets Matty Miss on RTZ's down there's a die back for the Morphling out for 80 seconds and without him very little EG can do Sameo gets fade bolted down by Kaka GG is called and Newbie move forward here in this game three victory and evil geniuses have come to the end of their road. Great comeback. EG, you know, they win a very convincing game one. It was a bit of a stomp. Game two, EG have another good laning stage. Look